Okay, so the next tool we're going to talk about is a common spiral auger bit. Uh, now there are literally dozens of different types of bits meant to be used in a brace, uh, but the spiral auger is probably the most common and the most used in today's hand tool shops, uh, so that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, so several of the hand tool dealers sell auger bit files specifically made for sharpening bits like these. Uh, the file has two tapered ends with opposing safe edges on each, in each end. Um, on one end, the teeth are filed on the wide faces and uh, the edges are safe, meaning there's no teeth cut in that edge. On the opposite end, the teeth are on the narrow edges and the faces are safe. The safe edges um, allow us to file tight to an inside corner without damaging the adjacent metal. Now another option, if you don't want to buy a dedicated auger bit file, is to make your own. Um, I like to use a simple popsicle stick and glue some sandpaper to it. So on this one I have two different grits of sandpaper, uh, one for coarser shaping um, and then a finer paper for fine honing. And now if there's one thing that you're going to remember about sharpening auger bits, let it be this. Do not, under any circumstance, sharpen the outside edges of these cutting spurs. Um, doing so would reduce the diameter of the bit at this end, which would then cause the bit to bind in its own hole because the diameter would be smaller at this end than it is up here. Um, so when you're going to file these bits, just remember, keep all of the sharpening to the inside edge of these spurs. Okay, now the purpose of the spurs is to score the outside of the hole before the waste is removed by the inner cutting lips. So the sharper you get the spurs, the cleaner the edges of the hole will be. So we simply take the wide edge of the file and we go ahead and we file the inside of these spurs until we get them to a sharp edge. Now, do your best to maintain the round um, cutting geometry, the round profile of the spur while you're sharpening, uh, but again, don't overanalyze it, just make sure it's sharp. Now, once the spurs are sharp, we can go ahead and sharpen the inner cutting lips. Now, we're going to use whatever edge of the file is easiest based on the size of the bit. So, if the wide flat edge is easier for you to get in here, and sharpen the top of this cutting lip, then you're going to use that edge. Um, if it's a smaller bit, you can go ahead and use the edge here for the smaller bits and just go ahead and file the top of that cutting lip. Um, these lips don't need as much attention as the spurs because they're not leaving a show surface. Um, so a little bit of light filing just to touch them up should really all be all that's required. And the last part of the bit that might need some attention is this lead screw. Um, sometimes the threads are, are you know, a little damaged, a little boogered up, you know, you can kind of try and fix those. Now if you pick up a bit and the threads are just really stripped out and really damaged, it's probably best to just pass on that bit, um, not try to fix it because when you get bits, screws that are really that damaged, it's really near impossible to fix them. So, uh, you know, better to just pass on the bit and move on and look for a better one. Uh, if you have one that the screw is in pretty good shape, and it just needs a little bit of attention. Well, you can often fix some burrs in the screws with something as simple as a, a saw sharpening file, a taper file, or a little needle file, triangular needle file, and just get in there and kind of reshape some of those threads a little bit and uh, you know, get some of the burrs off of the threads. Once the burrs are filed off the lead screw, I like to polish the screw a little to help minimize clogging later on. Um, so to do so, I just start boring a hole in a piece of wood and uh, just as the spurs start to bite, I back the auger out. So what I'll do is I'll put a drop or two of honing oil in that hole and I'll take a little silicon carbide lapping powder and add it to that hole. Now, try your best to just get it, get this in the hole and not get it all over like I just did, um, you know, so that you don't dull the cutting spurs or the, uh, 
or the lips. Um, and any extra that's on the surface, you can just kind of brush that away so that you don't dull the bit. Um, and then all we're going to do is we're going to take the bit and we're going to screw it into that hole. And then we're going to back it out. And then we're going to screw it in again. And then we're going to back it out again. And you're going to keep doing this until you have a decent polish on that screw. Uh, now a nice, you know, you can get an old toothbrush to sort of clean off the extra excess grit there. Uh, now if you can't get your hands on silicon carbide lapping powder, I got this years ago from Highland Woodworking. Um, I don't know if they still carry it. You can use, you know, diamond paste that they sell in the syringes for sharpening. You can probably use uh, like valve lapping compound, valve lapping paste from an auto, uh, auto parts store. Um, or even probably some green honing compound from you know your uh, your strop and just kind of scrape it off the stick into the hole um, you know just to you're just looking for some type of mild abrasive that can just polish this up just to keep wood shavings and dust from sticking and clogging that screw to stop it pulling through um, and if this hole gets a little too big before you're completely done you know just go ahead and bore start another hole and start the process over again. Put a little bit more oil in there, put a little bit more lapping paste in there and, and go to town. Um, you know, if you have a bit that has a lead screw that the threads are pretty good but it still tends to clog with wood chips and stop pulling the bit through, uh, go ahead and try polishing the screw. You might be surprised at the difference it can make.